Hi there guys and welcome to this week's episode of Behind the Frame. So I am hosting this week and pretty excited about it. Um, I got an inquiry from Declan Porter, uh, one of the wildlife followers, and he asked specifically how I process images in sepia. And I would love to dedicate this episode a, um, to a particular image that I really love and I feel is very well suited to the sepia tone um, and to that very dark, moody feel that I quite enjoy bringing out of, um, bringing out of an, a particular image. So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the processed version. Now this is what Declan saw um, when, he, uh, when he first inquired about it. So this is the a leopard. This was captured in South Africa's Sabi Sands um, or Sabi Sand Game Reserve. A beautiful cat, beautiful portrait and I love how this turned out. What we're going to do is we're going to run through this from beginning to end and I'm going to show you, I'm going to re-edit um, another version of it or a, a second copy and see if we can get it close, as close as possible to this. It's obviously not going to be exactly the same, but you'll see the steps that I followed in order to get to the final product. Um, I think first and foremost to begin with is to select um, the type of image that will suit a um, sepia file. So not every single image will will be suitable to sepia, absolutely. Um, and I can't quite put my finger on what makes a good sepia image for me. I, I, I can't, um, it's difficult to say exactly, but what I, what I have an idea of is I love um, images that are where there's a lot of greens and shadows and dark areas. I think sepia often brings out moody shots a lot better. Um, and so images that are rich in color, uh, rich in texture, like a, a, a not, not detailed texture, but um, you know, blurred out backgrounds work very well, bouquet um, and uh, portraits, beautiful for portraits, not so great. I'm not a big fan of it for landscapes, but definitely for portraits, tight um, images where you're trying to emphasize a subject or a story. Um, so I don't have a specific formula when I see the shot, kind of have a feel for it and I decide, cool, this is going to look best in sepia um, or not. So let's have a look at this. This is, this is the final, or the, the, the beginning version. This is, this is the raw file um, as shot on the day. So we're going to start off pretty much from here um, and I will hit develop and here's our panel of here that we're going to work this from. So typically I see it and then I, um, I'll get an idea of whether it'll go into sepia or not. But in this case, I know that we're obviously doing a sepia shot. So I select a basic sepia um, uh, preset here. So under black and white um, and we'll go and select sepia tone. All right. So there's our standard sepia conversion. Um, I always like to press Y to go back and forth. So now it's referring the original image. So you can see we've got a long way to go here. Um, and uh, not quite sure how close we're going to get, but we're going to give it a try. Um, often what I look for in an image is I look at cropping first. Not first, but I often um, do look at it right from the start. And in this case, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take away from the left a little bit here. Uh, I want the focus to be in this area here. The tail... There's light coming on here, there's light on her face, and then this is darker. This isn't so nice. So I'm going to try and, and take the emphasis away from the leaflet to the left here. But this is where I want the focus to be. So I'm going to create this image. I'm going to mold it. How I view color images or color files, it's more accurate as to what it looked like on the day. So I don't like to over-edit color images. I like it the way I kind of saw it. Um, so I try to keep it natural. When it comes to black and white sepias, special edits, then I feel personally I have a little bit of creative license. And that's what I'd like to do here. Um, use that creative license in order to mold this image. So I'll darken some areas, brighten some in order to, to really give this image sh some shape and dimension. That's the cool thing of black and whites and sepias. You can actually almost create something more than two-dimensional and we'll try and do that here as well so i'm going into the cropping um icon so that's just on the top left here in lightroom click on crop when i crop i hit the l button the l twice once does that 
So once hit, it dims the, the screen around the leopard or the image, a second time blackens it. So when I crop in the blackened mode, I can see my file perfectly. There's no distractions and I can crop it accordingly. So when I crop this, I want to be somewhere, I'm going to call it and say somewhere there. So I don't go by it as a rule, but that's corner there, the, 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 the four points, the four power points. Those are important visual aids, and it helps to guide the viewer's eye to a particular part of your image. So I mean, that's pretty much there and thereabouts. I'm going to leave it like this for the time being. I hit L for the third time, and my screen goes back to, to the normal bright version. So there's my crop file. Now i got to start um, editing this baby. If I look at my histogram, I have a lot of dark tones in this image, which is what I like, which is why it suits sepia, in my opinion. Even though it's co there are areas that are very dark and co almost completely black, it doesn't bother me um, in this file. It's fine. We can live with that. I can see that there's a bit of a brightness uh, lacking here, or whites. So I can pull up a little bit before it overexposes. Um, this tail will probably overexpose first, so I'm not going to do that right away, but I always keep an eye on my histogram to have an idea of how dynamic the file is and how much I still have to work with and, and how much I don't. So looking at this, I'm going to add a vignette. Just to, my idea is to make this leopard's face, this almost like this, this section here, I want that to stand out. The leopard's face, that bit there, and the tail. That must be the prominent, most prominent feature of this image. And I'm going to try and darken the rest of it in such a way that it doesn't stand out and distract from the file. So I go into effects, take the, the, the vignette, and I'll darken it to say first darken, let's call it minus 45. I also like even numbers, bit of a thing about it. <laughs> so 2, 4, 6, 8 is good. 5 is also good because it's in between uh, 1 and 10. So <laughs> uh, call it what you may. So there's my first vignette. Now I'm going to jump into a brush. So I've gone into my brushes top right here. And I want to, I want to use the brush to bring out bits of this image that I want to emphasize, specifically her face. Now in order to do that, I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer. So I'll go 1 over 2 to get me a little bit closer here. Let's go, let's go normal size. There we go. So there's that face. I go in closer so I have more detail and space to work with. I'm going to up my white slider in this case, and let's go a little bit on exposure. Let's see what that does. Just brushing the side of this leopard's face. Again, guys, I'm trying to emphasize definitely the face, but um, as much as possible, I want to bring the viewer's eyes, especially to, to that eye. So I'm going to add a new layer. I've done with that layer, adding a new layer. And working on, I'm, I'm avoiding this section here, and I'm working on the eyeballs and this mouth, bringing that out. So just like that, we can up it a little bit, maybe up the exposure a little bit. Up the whites just a touch more. Make sure that I'm not spilling too much here. So I'm going to click Erase. Just get rid of any areas where I might be spilling over onto his skin. I'm happy with that. Now I want to work on bringing just a focus to the eye. So I'm going to go in quite close here. Go in a little bit closer. Go three over one. Again, even though it's super zoomed in, I'm now able to work that eye a little bit more effectively. Only that eye, making sure that it pops and that it stands out. I do this with a lot of my files, work on the eyes. It's a big piece and, and feature of any image, eye contact. Um, and especially in this image, it's going to prove very important to have the eye feature. Now I'm going to bring some balance. You're going to already see the focus now as you look at this image is smack bang on her eyes. No doubt. Yeah? Straight onto the eyes. I want to use brushes still to darken what's happening around us. I'm going to go exposure down to about minus 50. We can take blacks down a little bit. So make my brush nice and big so I get an even brush mark without uh, um, the brush being too visible in this file. 
sort of working, you can see I even work outside the borders to allow for that brush to take full effect. Right, starting to look quite cool. Uh, select a new brush layer, similar kind of darkness, a little bit less dark. We'll work on those edges, darkening them, making sure that they don't feature much whatsoever. I want this to be about the leopard and that band that you can see. So make sure we get this bit down in between the legs, nice and dark. And I'm not gonna hide the legs too much, but I'm just playing with this brush, trying to mold this file for you. So that you can see what we're getting up to here. So there we go, two brush layers of darkness. We'll close that. Now I'm going to go into my um, the basic panel and up the whites. So by taking that up, it leaves the black bits and it works exclusively on the white part. So it's great because I keep contrast, but I bring out the whites. So I bring out um, a lot of... Um, uh, uh, vivid, like kind of the whites are white so the blacks stay darker and that's exactly what I want to try and achieve here. So, so far it's not looking too bad. I quite like this, where it's going. So often as I go, I see seeing things that kind of distract from the image. So for example, this there um, and that there distracts a little bit. So does that and maybe that. So what I'll try and do is, is get in and see if I can... Um, if I can get rid of it, not rid of it, but let's see if we can take some of it away so we have less of that distraction. So I'll darken my brush there a fair bit. I don't want to manipulate the image too much, but I just want my viewers to focus on the areas that I want them to focus on. Don't want them to see that and it distracts from that moment. Remember, you've got only a, a short view to get somebody's attention when, you, when you're showcasing work like this. And any little distractions like that will do exactly that. Distract from what you're trying to achieve. Um, so we'll go and we'll darken this a little bit. So now already, if I look at that, just a little bit of brush up work there. And already that's a lot better. My focus is now on my leopard. And I can see it beautifully. I'm going to grade another a brush layer and darken around the tail. Again, just adding to that story. I, I want that leopard to really stand out like that. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. To darken that a little bit. Darken that. Let's leave that one out. Command Z deletes it. We can do a new layer, not quite as dark. Just darken bits of that grass there. So hitting L twice gives me an idea of where I'm at. And I mean, that's looking pretty, pretty awesome, I think. Um, and I'm, I'm very happy with where this is going. If I look at where we came from, if I create a copy, so go create virtual copy, creates a second digital copy, um, and that one I can now, I can reset. So if you look at where we started, that's the color version. And then if I edit that and take it into sepia you can see so there's the beginning of our sepia file this is file number number raw so this is the original straight from raw converted to sepia if you look at this looking at that your, your focus should be here it shouldn't be all around in this file and it currently is it's it's you're picking up a lot of um, mess and distraction either side of this leopard but my idea with this image and and processing it was to bring the attention to the leopard. Now if I go back to the, the finished product, look at the difference. So immediately this, it's almost, it's almost you can see that face, how it stands out from the rest of her. And you get a sense of dimension. You get that three-dimensional feel. If I go back to the original sepia version, it's very flat. You can see that. It's really, really one-dimensional, very flat. All of a sudden, that happens so that's it guys if I look at um, the the version that Declan first asked about this is it here I'm gonna skip to it now so that's that's the original version quite rich in sepia which you can get 
by doing um, by just increasing the the hue and the saturation in the in the editing panel. I wanted to do something a little bit different, and I love how this came out. It's it's not quite black and white. It's not quite sepia. It's a lovely tone in between, which is something I've been doing um, with a lot of my images, just to not have a too heavy sepia, but a kind of beautiful off tone, uh, which I really like. So there you have it, Declan. I hope that helped everyone else who watched. I really hope that helped. Um, you know, it's it's always interesting to see how we get to the final product, um, and it's something unless you join us on Safari, it's very difficult to do that, but. Um, fortunately, Andrew started this behind the frame series, which has really helped a lot of people. And you get to see how we do it. Uh, you know, we by no means the best uh, photo editors in, in, in the world, but we um, at least know our way around a little bit. And I hope this was helpful to you. Um, if there's anything else you guys wanted to see edits, edited by any one of the Wild Eye team members, give us a shout. Let us know. Uh, we'll be happy to put it into one of these, uh, these behind the frame series. Cool, guys. Thanks a lot, and uh, thanks for watching. I'll catch up with you soon.